Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome with welcome to New Life this morning. I hope you've come to praise the Lord. We got matching shirts, sister. Hallelujah. All right. If you will, stand with us. And uh, we are going to um, um, worship. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating because Clay's taking too long to do his little thing. Sorry, I just threw you under the bus. But um, who had a good Easter last week? Raise your hand. Good. Awesome. Well, it's good to see your smiling faces this morning. Y'all ready? Yes. <laughs> Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Disappointment, Sunday's empty too. Since when has it possibly This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave. scripture this morning that I wanted to read to you guys. Actually, I look, was looking at two, but I think I'm going to go with the one in Isaiah 10, 50, uh, that's, that's the page, 1059. That's my page, sorry. 
55, Psalm 55. And it, in verse 8 it says, for, the thoughts, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. How many of y'all have thought that many times? Maybe you're there right now, like, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. And I know that your thoughts are better than mine, and I know that your thoughts are, um, you got a plan, Lord. And I don't know what that plan is, and I don't like to know what that plan is. But when we get down to the end of it, we just have to trust the Lord. Amen? Trust the Lord. It says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees on the field will clap their hands. Instead of thorn brush that will grow, uh, instead of the thorn brush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. Amen. Let's bind together in a prayer of agreement this morning. Let's ask the Lord to help us to just walk in his peace, walk in his will, walk in his strength. Whatever it is, whatever path that we have to go down, he already knows about it. Let's just walk hand in hand. How many of you know the footprints poem, that little footprints, you know, you look back and you only saw one set of footprints and it's because that the Lord was carrying that person. However you have to envision it, just close your eyes and envision it now that you and the Lord are making a way that y'all are walking together, that y'all are going through it together. He's with you when you're trying to figure out the finances. Envision him sitting there. He's with you when you're in the doctor's office. He's with you if you have to have a procedure because he will be the hands of the physician. He's with you in a relationship that is struggling. and He will give you the words to say and the eyes to see and the heart to have compassion. He's with you if you're grieving because he wraps his arms around those that are broken hearted and his mercies are new every morning. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you don't understand, whatever it is that is causing you to be tossed to and fro, let's decide this morning to lay it down and to walk with Jesus. Amen. Father God, we walk with you this morning. We trust you this morning. You are the good father. You are, you have the cattle on a thousand hills. You, Lord God, are with us. You're in our tomorrows. You love us. You have your arms wrapped around us. You are in control. We are engraved in the palms of your hands, and our walls are ever before you. You are a good and loving and faithful God, and we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Lord, we, I plead the blood of Jesus over your sons and daughters that every fiery dart, every seed of doubt, every bit of anxiety and depression and oppression will be put out, will be gone in Jesus' name. Father, today, let your sons and daughters see and understand and comprehend and receive the love and mercy and grace of our good God, our mighty God, Thank you, Jesus, for all that you did for us. Seal the work that you're doing, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. So come and consume me. My heart is ready. God, if I burn, I burn. Fresh fire, give me a fresh, fresh. 
greater. Greater are you who saved me than he who saved the world. The world was stronger than the world. strong again in my spirit that we are walking around with this burden burdens burdens heavy heavy burdens I'm one of them I was one of them this morning several spoke this morning in our circle talking about burdens that we have been having and I feel like the Lord is saying again that these burdens that we're walking around we're walking around alone we're walking around with these burdens but we need to look towards Jesus look towards the salvation look towards the, our answer for the peace and the joy of God amen whatever it is that you're struggling with whatever it is that's burdening you I want to tell you that you are a child of God I don't care where you've been I don't care what you've been doing I don't care where you've where you come from God loves you he has a plan for your life the enemy wants to distract us he wants to get us off onto a detour but let's get back on the lane let's get back over let's get our focus on to Jesus amen let's shake off every heavy band Let's shake off every burden. The Word says that we can exchange our yoke, that heaviness, for the yoke of the Lord, which is light and which is easy. He is not leaving us alone. He has not abandoned us. We are not in this alone. He wants us to be alone. He wants us to internalize it and keep it alone. But He is with us. So if you will, if you have a burden, I want you just to symbolically raise up your hands towards heaven and shake off that burden. Shake it off on two. Shake it off. Just give it back to the Lord and let His peace and let His love and His mercy and His joy restore you. Let His joy and His mercy refocus your mind, refocus your eyes, refocus your purpose. God's not done with you yet. Let's get off of the detour. Get off of the detour. And get on the track. Let's get going.
never gonna see him Lonely majesty Oh, let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice You see, he wraps himself in light He is the very light You see, darkness can only try trembles at his voice, trembles at his very voice. How great is yes, our God. Oh, yes. Yes. How great is our God. Oh, 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 you how great is your God how great is your God he knows how great he is he, he's not wondering he didn't say thank y'all for singing that song because I've forgotten who I was that's not what it's about in fact 
you can never say another thing and he'd be perfectly fine. He knows exactly who he is. Our praise is not only adoration to him from our heart, but it's recognition to him about who he is in our lives. Who he is to us. Come on somebody, if you understand what I'm saying. So what I've learned is, now granted, there, there are exceptions. That you go through some things sometimes and you're up and down and <clears throat> you're in the valley some and you're on the mountain some. But what I have learned, and this is pretty true across the board, the view that I have of God is proportionate with the amount of praise that I give Him. And it's also proportionate with how I live my life and what people around me see. And you know what people around us struggle with is when we say that our God is great and able to do all things exceeding abundantly above everything we could ask and then we whine and fuss and complain all week like he can't give us a ham sandwich. Isn't that right? So let me ask you one more time. How great is your God? How great is your God in your life? <clears throat> what has he done for you? Because I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I would not be here, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly convinced, I would not be even on this planet alive at this time in my life if it wasn't for him because he found me when I was headed in a completely wrong direction and he stopped and intervened and he said you got a chance right here son I'm here to help you I'm here to bless you I'm here to save you I'm here to change your future and your destiny and your legacy he picked me up out of that miry clay and as the song said he set my feet on a solid rock to stay and you know what <clears throat> I am not going to let no rock cry out for me I am not going to allow my life now listen I go through hard times just like everybody else I have rough times just like everybody else I have times when I don't feel it like everybody else but you know what I don't worship him based on what I feel now granted, there'll be times that my worship is a little more loud or a little more expressive because I'm feeling a little bit better than I was, but I worship Him based off of who He is and what He's done. Because sometimes I don't feel like doing things for her or him or them or y'all. I don't feel like telling them or showing them how important they are. But I do it because that's who they are in my life. Am I helping somebody this morning? God is so good. He's so good. And if He's done anything for you, if He saved you, listen. You say, well, I ain't never seen no miracles like people talk about. He healed so-and-so. I wish he healed me. <clears throat> I prayed for him to heal my mama, but my mama died. Listen, if God never does another thing in this living world, he's died on that cross and rose from that grave and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and that alone means that he deserves the praise and the glory and the honor, every bit of praise that we could possibly give him. But you know what? He didn't stop there. He said, in my mind, he could say, I've done enough. I've done all. Now I'm going to sit right here until you decide that I'll go get the faithful. But that ain't what he said. That's not what the Word tells us. The Word tells us that even now, he ever lives to make intercession for us. That He's constantly interceding for us. That He's constantly helping us. 
And he says, if you'll do this, little things that I'm asking you to do. If you'll just let me be in your life. If you'll let me change. If you'll walk out in my spirit. If you'll just do a few little things I ask you to do. I'll pour out blessing on you in this world <coughs> so large there won't even be room enough in your life to contain it. He's so good. How great is your God? Is He great? Is He worthy? He's worthy to be praised. Come on, one more time. Lift your voice. Lift your hand. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph. He's worthy to be praised. Come on, how great. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. you get to declare who he is come on he's a name above all names he is worthy of all praise and my heart will see how great time will you <clears throat> hallelujah he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy 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 is the lamb praise you Jesus well aren't you glad to be alive say amen if you'd rather be here than the best hospital in the whole state somebody say amen amen listen our young people you go ahead and line up and get ready to be dismissed while they're doing that, I want to make a couple of quick announcements to you. I, uh, I, I, I was uh, doing a couple of changes. Thank you guys so much. How about a hand of praise for this praise team? <clears throat> you can applaud them and praise their, their, their things, right? 
they're, they're good. They, they practice, they work hard, they're using their talents and gifts and uh, doing the things that we need done to help us be ushered in to the presence of God and that His presence will be ushered in here. Amen? Amen. And we're grateful and thankful. Um, I was making a couple of changes while Lori was opening, so I don't know what all she shared and what she didn't, but um, a couple of announcements. Um, I, I was asked, and, 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 I'm, and I think I'm remembering most of them. I might need some help. Um, right after this service, there is a, a small, brief, not small, but brief, um, VBS meeting. Where are you going to be at? Right over here in this section. Anybody who's already a part or you want to be a part in serving in this year's <coughs> Vacation Bible School, God moves in these Vacation Bible Schools and every year it just gets better and better and, and we see these young people being ministered to and coming to the Lord and it's just a fantastic fantastic ministry and so if you want to be a part and you say well I don't know how to teach I don't know how to do this you might know how to make a sandwich though right you know how to make a sandwich you know how to you you can walk the halls you can you can pray you can you can do all types of things there's so many different roles and ways that you can be involved in this VBS so right after this service please be here get up here as quick as you can and uh, you'll have that meeting <coughs> on May um, is it the first pop May the first or the first Monday in May let's just call it that way men the men's uh, fellowship will have their meeting and resume back so uh, I was asked to make that announcement as well also two announcements for some of our youth activities and groups that uh, that are happening uh, right after right after this service out in the lobby I believe is where it's going to be um, the uh, the dance team praise team Hannah what do you what is it called New Life Dance Team, um, and uh, they've been practicing and getting some stuff together, <coughs> and uh, they will, they will, are having a bake sale, is that right? So go by there and buy a bunch of stuff and give them a bunch of money. <laughs> and if you're not eating, listen, if you're not eating sugar, then buy it and give it to somebody who is, right? Because somebody is. Um, just or just give them a donation and let somebody else buy it, and that way you can it can be it can be doubly blessed that way. Also, next Sunday, I was asked to remind you <coughs> um, the, the 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 morning that all the tornado and hail that was uh, March twenty sixth, I believe. I, I know that because I've been having to make insurance claims um, on houses and cars and stuff like that. So. Um, the, when, the, when the tornado and all the hail and the power was out and everything happened, um, we had to cancel the service that morning, obviously. And then uh, we had a youth uh, supper, lunch, luncheon schedule for that day. That's going to be next Sunday, uh, immediately following the service. So <coughs> your pastor is inviting you to a spaghetti supper, a spaghetti lunch next Sunday after, after uh, service. Amen? Thank you. At least somebody likes spaghetti. Come be a part. You'll enjoy it. Spaghetti, all the fixings. Uh, it's donations only. Come and support our young people, and, uh, and, and you'll be blessed by it. Um, listen, unless you are got to be out of town next week, there's plenty of time for you to arrange in your schedule to just eat lunch here. Um, it's a great time. It's a great time of fellowship. It's a great time of, of being together. And, you know, I often hear sometimes, listen, <clears throat> I might be meddling here for a second, but I just want to encourage you with something. I often hear people say, well, I don't know so-and-so, and I don't feel like I'm a part, or I feel like, you know, that I, 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 things happen, and I'm not, I'm not part of it, or I miss things. And, well, you got to get involved in stuff. You know, if you just walk in and walk out, walk in and walk out, you know, you, you can't expect that, you know, well, so-and-so didn't know I was sick. Well, yeah, because they didn't know. Because nobody's involved in your life on that level to, to understand where you are. Does, does that make sense? It happens in my own house. How many of you ever raised teenagers? Raise your hand. <coughs> yeah? How many of you got some teenagers right now? So you understand what I'm saying. It's not just teenagers, but it's a lot. most of the time it happens in these teenagers. And what happens is that they get in these places where they think they... They, they can do everything, they think they don't need anybody, and they know everything, right? 
And it's so like, I want to go in my room, leave me alone, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I don't know, I don't know my friends, are right, right? <coughs> you with me? This is good ministry, you need to listen to what I'm saying. I ain't just complaining as a parent, I'm actually preaching. And then they'll find, and then, and then, they, they, then they come along after a little while and they'll say something like, well, when did that happen? Right? When did y'all watch that? Or when did y'all go there? Or when did that happen? Or I didn't know that. Or I, I didn't realize they got engaged. That's because you ain't been part of the family. That's because you stuck yourself off in that little hole like a bump on a pickle, thinking you know everything, can do everything. You don't need anybody. Nobody's cool enough for you unless they're on the other side of the world on, on, in a video game. Uh oh, no, you didn't. But anyhow, my point is this. We are family. Be a part. Now, everybody can't be at everything, but come on, be a part. You've got things we need, and we've got things you need. Amen? So come be a part, you know. <clears throat> and if you've got plans already, you can just leave a donation for that as well. And uh, is there anything else I forgot, or I'm good? I'm good. Thanks. I remember it all. Somebody give me a hand. Because that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Somebody told me this morning, driving to church, your memory is not quite, quite, not quite like it used to be lately. And I was thinking... After a comment like that, you ought to be glad it is. <laughs> right? Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, Pastor Lori has a quick uh, uh, thing to do right here. Uh, a, little, a little gift award to give out real fast. And then we're going to move on with the service. Those of you who have been able to attend one of our uh, appreciation dinner meals understand that um, each year we pick a servant award to uh, an individual that goes above and beyond uh, service at New Life. Um, the dinner is, a, is invite only. It's, uh, if you serve in some capacity here at the church, you're invited. You get a meal. There's entertainment usually me and uh, uh, a sometimes gift. sometimes me uh, and it's just a wonderful time together that night uh, this this year uh, we have a service award that we lovingly named after um, Hitchcock Greg Hitchcock and Earl Williams they are two of the most faithful men in our church they serve so faithfully so wonderfully I mean they just do without even having to be asked and so five years ago, we started this award called the Hitchcock uh, Williams Service Award. <clears throat> this year, um, we, uh, well, each year we <coughs> recognize an individual, uh, an adult, and uh, a teenager. And this year, we recognize Terry Wood um, because she is so wonderful, and I'm not going to give the whole speech again. Um, <laughs> And the teenager that we uh, recognize this year was Samuel Yates. And, um, and usually none of you guys that aren't at that event ever even hear anything about it. But we had an extra individual this year that we wanted to give an extra award to. And I, didn't have the, I don't have my speech, so she'll have to listen to the video if she hasn't listened to it already. But um, because she's here today, but um, we wanted to recognize you, Ashley. Um, and uh, Ashley, uh, come on up, Ashley. Uh, we had an extra award, Hitchcock Williams Servant Award, to Ashley McKinley. Ashley has moved to uh, Griffin Forsyth area. Y'all give her a hand. She, uh, she's been our children's director. Uh, 
she's done drama, she's done ladies ministry, she's done um, a little bit of anything and everything. She's cleaned the church last second when I've had to call her, but somebody wasn't able to show up, and she came up here and cleaned the whole church by herself. Um, she is just a remarkable woman. And um, this uh, past year and a half has been a hard year for her. She lost her spouse. Um, she um, went to school in the evening. She worked. She raised three children. Uh, and, uh, and she's moved several times in several different jobs. And so she's been through a lot. And, and she still gave 150% to the children's department and VBS and Awana and, 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 and. And so you are most deserving of this award. We hate that we're losing you to uh, your new fella and that family, but we're happy at the same time. So if he don't treat you right, just let us know. We'll come down there and whoop his butt and uh, put him in place. And, uh, but you are so deserving of all the happiness and this little bit of honor that we could give you today. We love you. We're going to whip his butt. Thank you. All right. I found out, too, um, that we were talking about people who serve and people who do things and, and uh, how long Terry had been serving in this church body. Uh, not just serving like in the kingdom, but like in this one particular church congregation. And... Uh, I, somebody, uh, Greg told us after the fact, I asked her how long she'd been teaching Sunday school, and she said, I don't remember. That's how long it's been. She don't remember how long it's been. But Greg, how old are you, Greg? Huh? Greg is 60 years old, <coughs> and Greg said that Terry was my Sunday school teacher at the old church. <laughs> so... You know, but sometimes, sometimes, you know, the Lord moves people, and we don't like that, but that's part of pastoring. That's part of, of being a family, right? Sometimes you raise them up, and they move on and do things. Sometimes you have to kick them out, right? Because they have a failure to launch. Um, but that's part of parenting. That's part of that. Sometimes we get to keep them, and sometimes the Lord raises them up and moves them on. And I'm sure that, that, that Ashley will serve in, in, the, in the congregation that the Lord puts her in. Uh, I know, I think she found a home church already, and, uh, and praise God for that, because that's not an easy process at all. She's going to finish up with this VBS, though, so you, she'll be around. Uh, we're not going to let her skate free, you know what I'm saying? So, but she will, she's going to finish up with this VBS, and so you'll have a little bit of time to, uh, to love on her and hug on her and and bless her in all kind of ways. Um, green dollar bills works every time. Right? <laughs> She's like, whoo, yeah. So uh, God is doing some fantastic work. And, you know, who knows about Samuel? One day he may grow up and move out. Maybe, maybe he stays here. Maybe he stays in this area. Maybe he, you know, becomes, you know, the next, who knows what, the greatest thing on the planet. He's going to be whatever God wants him to be. We love to just keep them all. But what we do know is that they have a fantastic start. Amen. They, they serve the Lord. They serve the body. And uh, it, it, is, it is evident that God, um, that God is in their life. And that's, what, that's why we recognize people for doing those things. Because we couldn't operate this ministry without you guys that volunteer and give and work and do the things that you do. And, you know, Lori and I understand that because... We, we served for years and years and years just like you do and you have um, and still serve. Um, even though, you know, this is not only just, you know, our church, this is our job. But listen, we did this before we were getting paid. We'll be doing it after we're getting paid, right? Do like this. So we understand and we appreciate it. Um, <coughs> I have, a, uh, I have a, a word for you today. Um, and, and I want to uh, share this with you, um, and I want to have a time at the end where we can pray, and, and I'm going to ask the prayer team to be ready to come up toward the end of the service, 
and we'll have times in the altar or you'll have time to pray with yourself or individually. Um, but I, I, want to, I want to share this word and I really feel in my spirit that, that God wants us to, uh, to have a time of prayer. Um, in Acts chapter 12, verse 4, I, uh, I talked about this last week. I talked about this scripture last week and I did it <coughs> in a different, in a different um, light that I'm doing it today, but it's the same scripture. And uh, it says, and when he, had a, when he had apprehended him, talking about Peter, with this is Pilate had arrested Peter. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quaternions, uh, which is a, a squad of soldiers to keep him, and intending that after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So here's the thing. Pilate, or not Pilate, I'm sorry, Herod. Herod had, <coughs> Herod had beheaded James and then arrested Peter, and he intended to do the same thing to Peter, but he had a ca calendar problem. Okay, now last week we talked about this scripture, and we talked about how you know, Easter fits in with the celebration and the holidays. and So this is the time of Passover. Post-resurrection, it became known as a time of Easter. A celebration of the resurrection is tied to the Passover, which, by the way, was the whole purpose of the Passover to begin with. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> and so Herod had a problem. Is that His problem is... He was doing everything he could to destroy the New Testament church and its leaders. However, he knew if he continued to do that during this time when everybody was coming for this Passover Easter celebration, that he was going to have some problems. Problems that he didn't want to have to have because it would get big and it would get ugly. And the last thing they wanted was problems with the Romans, Roman government not seeing them not take care of their, their stuff. So he had a calendar problem, and he decided to wait until after Easter was over, and then he would do what he planned. However, something happened, something changed, God intervened in that situation because the next thing we see is that Peter didn't get beheaded, he was out of jail, right? Right? <clears throat> How many of you have observed that Satan often overplays his hand? Anybody know what I'm talking about? He overestimates his ability to do destruction to the lives of believers. Not all believers, mind you, because some people play along with his plans. Now, if you're not a believer, you're fair game, I just want to tell you. If you haven't trusted Jesus and you're not in the covenant <coughs> that Jesus made with the resurrection and the, and the death, and the, the, the reason we celebrate Easter, then, you know, the, I, I hear people all the time that go, well, I don't understand why God allows all this to happen. How many of you ever heard somebody ask that question? Well, if God is good, why does he let all this happen? Because people aren't in covenant. It's a simple fact. It's because sin is in this world and people aren't in covenant with God. Now, this is going to be a good message. I, I pray that it's going to be a good message for you and it's going to encourage you and help you. It's going to stretch you and challenge you. They might step on a few toes this morning, but that's okay because I didn't come here to patty cake. I didn't come here to mess around. I don't come here preaching for applause. Although I think it's good for you to give the Lord a hand to praise every now and then. It encourages the preacher too. But the whole purpose of preaching is to bring change. The whole purpose for declaring the word of God is so that people can understand who God is and what God will do. And so the simple answer to the question, why is all this bad stuff happening in the world if God is such a good God? It's because people broke covenant. Sin came in the world. They're still out of covenant. And so all the mess that they deserve is what they get. I know that sounds hard. 
But the fact of the matter is, when mankind broke covenant with God, what we deserved was pain and death and destruction. Because he said that's what's going to happen. And then we're surprised when pain and death and destruction comes. Go figure. Don't get quiet on me. I'll stop right there and preach. I remember John David was a little boy. I remember one time he, his thing was he wanted to know why he was getting spanked and how many licks he was going to get. I don't know why, but that boy needed to know every time. Why? That's a good thing. Because hopefully that makes him understand if you don't want correction and punishment, then you change your behavior. That's the whole purpose of punishment to begin with, right? If punishment is not changing behavior, then you need to change the punishment. I'm just saying. But he wanted to know why. And then he wanted to know how many. I guess he wanted to prepare his cheeks or something. I don't know. How many? He going to count. Yeah, he can tough it out, right? We can hold on for four. He hated it when I said, I don't know. How many? I hadn't decided. <laughs> how many? <laughs> Whenever I said I hadn't decided, it's because I was still mad. So I had to wait. Because I try not to punish him when I was mad. And I remember one time telling him, he said, Daddy, tell me again why I'm getting a spanking. I said, because you deserve it. In his eyes, he looked at me like I had literally broken his heart. Like, I don't understand. I thought I just did something wrong. I'm your son. What do you mean I deserve it? And we had a little lesson about consequences. It doesn't mean I didn't love him. It doesn't mean he's a bad kid. It doesn't mean that I don't, I'm going to throw him out. And he's, he's doesn't even mean he's disappointed. It means he did something he wasn't supposed to do. And that something that he did is deserving of punishment. And listen, it's not like God didn't tell us ahead of time. If you do this, you get all the good stuff. If you do this... You're going to get bad stuff. Now do this so that you'll be blessed. Isn't that what God told Cain? He said, Cain, Cain got mad at God because God refused his sacrifice. Why? Why did God refuse his sacrifice? Anybody know? Say it again. He was disobedient. He didn't bring what God told him to bring. He said, you're supposed to bring this as a sacrifice, an offering. And he brought something else. He decided he knew what was best for his life, and he brought something else. And God said, nope, that's not good enough. And he got mad. And God asked him this question. He said, don't you know? Don't you know if you do what is right, that blessings, good things will follow? But if you don't, if you're disobedient, that what's going to follow? The fruit of disobedience. And there we stand sometimes, isn't it true? And so here's what I want to say. <clears throat> if you're not in covenant with God, I want to say this. I'm grateful that he blesses you sometimes. And I'm grateful that he's gracious and merciful all the time. Gracious means he gives you things you don't deserve. Merciful means he doesn't give you what you do deserve. 
But if you're not in covenant with God, you can't expect any of his promises to be true in your life. Kids that don't belong to me don't get to just walk up in my house, sit down and eat. They don't. They get to be a part of my meal if I invite them and they accept. And, and hey, listen, when I, we were living in Madison, you remember this? We were living in Madison. We had some kids that moved in across the street. These nice little boys. Um, <clears throat> one was John David's age. One was younger, like Seth's age, maybe in between Haley and Seth. But that little young one, he didn't understand the rules. You know what I'm saying? One day, the kids used to go outside and play when they lived across the street, and they would play, and they would go in the back and pounce on, bounce on trampoline, run around, do the stuff that kids do. And, and then when they were over at the house, they were swimming or eating or, you know, I mean, swimming or playing or, or doing the things they do, we would have snack for, you know, John, Ava, and Haley, and, and Seth. And then Lori would also say, hey, would y'all like a snack too? You, is it okay? Would your parents care if you have a snack? The answer to that from just about every kid is no, they don't care. Right? We had some kids before that said, no, I can't eat red dye. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> can't have sugar. You got carrot sticks. No, we don't have carrot sticks around here, bro. We got ho-hos. <laughs> you got to go down the road if you want to be healthy. <laughs> but this particular day, Lori and I were sitting there. John Avon, John Avon, Haley, and Seth were not even home, I don't think, or at least... At least John Avon and Haley weren't. They were somewhere doing something, and, and we were sitting there, and all of a sudden, the front door opened. Front door opens. <laughs> this little kid walks in the front door. He said, hey, <laughs> John Avon here? I said, no, he's not. He said, well, can I go in his room, play with his toys? I said, no, you can't. And then he's, he says, okay, fine. So he starts to leave. He turns around. He asks Lori, he said, hey, you got any of those things we had for a snack the other day? She said, no, son, get outside and go. Go home and get a snack. Well, that may seem ugly to you. But the thing is, he ain't our kid. He's not a homeless kid. Now, we help people, but he had a family. He got a home right across the street. You can't come in my house and play with our stuff and eat our food if you're not part of the family or at least invited by somebody who's in the family. Does that make sense? <clears throat> now, why is it we can understand that, but we don't understand the principles of covenant? The truth is we understand it, but we want something for nothing. That's what we want. We want to do everything that we want to do. We want to have our cake and eat it too, so to speak. We want to live by our own rules and yet be, be privileged and, and blessed by God. And it doesn't work that way. And so I started all that tangent to say, if you're not part of the covenant, you're fair game. But if you're in covenant with God, if you belong to the, to, the, to the Lord, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the whole reason Easter happened, then the devil doesn't have just free reign to do whatever he wants to in your life. He often overshoots and overexpects and overplays his hand. But for those of us who understand and believe and walk in covenant, for those of us who are empowered by the Spirit of God and walk in discipline and, and, and <coughs> obedience to God, and yes, it takes discipline and obedience to walk with God. Come on, somebody. Yes, He's gracious. Yes, He's merciful. But you've got to be disciplined. And you've got to be obedient. For us, for those who understand this and, and are in God's covenant, there is a divine disruption, a divine intervention that happens in our lives when we submit ourselves to Christ. This happens for those who believe in Jesus for salvation, first of all, and then we continue to walk 
in, his, in the spirit. And when the enemy tries to come against us, he said, all right, I've lost you for eternity, but I'm going to destroy your life on this earth. I'm going to mess you up. I'm going to hurt you. Listen, and when we understand, sometimes God just fights for us when we don't, when we don't even ask him to. When we didn't do nothing, he just does the things he knows how to do. But then there are times when the devil is trying to come against us and God says, hey, right here, I, I got a place for you right here. Come here. Right? If we just keep on walking, don't get blamed if you get shot. But if we go into the hiding place, are you following me? There are divine disruptions to the devil's plans. And, 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 and don't, don't, don't get it wrong. If you don't live for God, you ain't the devil's friend. Some people go, well, the devil won't bother me because, you know, I, I, I'm on his side. You, he don't have a side. He don't have a side. The only side he has is himself. And all he wants to do is kill, steal, and destroy. He ain't bothering you right now because you ain't a threat to him. He's already got you in the fold. And so you're going to spend eternity with him if you don't change your mind and trust Jesus. So don't think because you ain't fighting the same fight that some folks are, you're okay. You're not okay. You're just not worth bothering with. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. From his perspective. But from God's perspective, he's done everything he can do and still does everything he can to help us to avoid all that pain and all that destruction and eternity without God. So I want to talk about post-Easter intentions. Post-Easter intentions. Because we can't celebrate. Listen to me. We can't celebrate and worship the resurrected Savior like we did last week and then turn around and go back living like he's dead. See, that's what the world has a problem with. You think the world doesn't like Jesus. You think the world doesn't like discipline or hope or obedience. The truth is, all of us. Look, there are some people who are just going to be wild no matter what. Those people have some mental and emotional issues. It's a fact. But most of us crave structure. As people, we crave boundaries. We crave, we crave structure. We crave security we crave comfort we crave peace of mind and God says I offer all that to you and there's only a couple of things you have to do but see what the world the world is craving that too that's why people are trying everything known to mankind to find that joy and peace and happiness and 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 peace of mind and all this stuff that they can't you know why people do drugs you want people wind up drinking so much that they can't control themselves? It's because they're trying to escape the pain and the frustration and the disappointment or the or or or, or the discouragement or the depression, whatever it else is in their lives. Now it doesn't start that way. It starts that way because we believe a deception and we think it's going to be okay. <clears throat> it's just a part-time escape. It's just fun. I'm just going to feel good for a minute. For a little while. But that little while doesn't last. And that's why you have to do more and more. And different, different. And then the next thing you know, you wind up you got to do what you were doing to try to feel good just to survive. And you don't even feel good when you feel good. And the only reason you do it anymore is because at least you don't think about it. Because you can't. Am I talking to somebody? And that's the true with anything. That's true with any substance. That's true with any behavior. When it becomes addictive in our lives, that's the reason we do it. We're doing it for escape. We're doing it for... 
you know, for, for, for hope. We're trying to find something. But I want to tell you this. You'll never find it unless you find it in Jesus. You'll never find it outside of God. You can try and try and try and try, and you'll get a little temporary here, temporary there. The Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season. But the devil ate your friend. And make no mistake about it, it will cause you to go places you never intended on going and do things you never intended on doing and winding up where you never intended winding up. So we can't worship God on Easter and talk about how he's alive and then go back on Monday or next week or two weeks later and live like he's still dead. Because if we, would, if we believe he's alive, if we believe he did something in us by his death and resurrection, then we will live like those that have been redeemed. And I'm not preaching about behavior. I'm not preaching about mouth or cussing or drinking or smoking or women or sex. And I'm not talking about all that stuff that you think I'm talking about where you're just being judgmental. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who live what they believe. Not just, I'm not even trying to make you believe it. You profess you believe it yourself. Now this one here <coughs> ain't mine. Naturally. But he made himself mine when he came and asked me if he could have what is mine. Does that make sense? He loves her and she loves him. And so we have learned to love him. Now, we loved him long before because we knew him when he was running around in diapers. But I didn't know he was going to wind up trying to take my girl from me. <laughs> but here's the thing. He's, he's ours now. And we have accepted him and we have made that understood. And she is theirs now. And it works the same way. But let me tell you what would mess the relationship up. I just want to show you something. If they get married, and then later on, she comes home to visit, but he doesn't come with her. And that just continues over and over and over. Or... He comes over to the house with her. We get ready to sit down and eat. He's off in the living room somewhere. We're sitting down as a family. He's outside in the, at, on the porch doing whatever. Does that make sense? If you exclude yourself, if you won't be part of the family, you can't enjoy the benefits of being part of the family. More, the benefits are offered to you, but you don't enjoy the benefits. And then you only have yourself to blame. But you know what normally happens? This ain't going to happen because we ain't going to let it happen. But what would normally happen is they come home next year for Christmas. He's off somewhere else. We all have Christmas. And then he goes home. They're driving home and he says... I don't even feel like your family knows me. I don't even feel like they love me. She may or may not say it, but the truth of the matter is, well, yeah, because you don't talk to nobody. You don't get... Now, this doesn't happen. I'm just using an example. It's in my family. I understand. It makes, am I making sense to you? We've seen this before. We've acted like this before, right? Yeah. We've, we've, we, you, you guys know somebody like that? Anybody? Y'all you, got somebody in your family? Like that? If you don't have somebody in your family like that, it might be because you are that. That's a, that's a decision you have to make. Now, that don't mean you got to be chummy and, and, and right up under somebody every time you turn around because sometimes space is good. Right? I think that's why kids grow up, get married, and leave. 
Because grown folks, you, you just can't have several grown folks trying to run the same house. That don't work. So here's my point. If you are professing, you believe something, that's what I was talking about when I started talking about Cody and Haley. Listen, if he says, I'm going to be her husband and I'm going to be part of your family and, and that's what I want to be when, and I want her to be part of mine, but then we act like we're not family, you're not living what you believe. And a lot of believers, and I believe they are people who believe, they're people who believe that Jesus died for them. They're people who believe that Jesus saved them. He's raised them from the dead. <clears throat> they're people who believe that he can do so and so and so and so, but many of them don't believe he can or he will do it for them. Or they act like certain parts of the covenant don't apply to them. But I'm telling you something. Listen, if you've trusted Jesus, every benefit is yours. And every obligation is yours as well. Is this all right? Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 31 says this. And they came unto thee, and as the people come, and they sit before, I'm reading from King James, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear my words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth out their, uh, after their covetousness. So here's what that says in translated plain Bib City English. They say one thing, but they turn around and do something else. And I can't trust them because they don't live what they say they believe. We must understand that the most important part of church, the most important part of kingdom living, the most important part of being a body is not the singing. The, this particular service, the most important part of coming to church as a church body is not the singing and the preaching. I love the singing and I love the preaching and I, I do it as best as I know how to do and it's super important, but it's not the most important part. The most important part is your response. My, our response. The most important part of the whole preaching and singing, the reason we come here. It's not just to feel good. I didn't come here to get a charge. I didn't come here <coughs> to get goosebumps. Because I've heard people constantly, and this is the problem. Listen, I want to tell you as a pastor, can I just be transparent with you for a minute? I love having revival services, and I love having camp meeting. And I love having guests come in and do things and, and, and all that stuff. But you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. From the, from the administrative side of things, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of commitment from people. It takes a lot of pulling out of people, and it takes usually a lot of money to do these things. And then people come in and they want to feel good. They want to get happy. They want to, woo, didn't we have church? And then they go back to live in hell on earth and nothing changes. And really, honestly, it's not worth it. Well, what about that one? What a, I understand that, but truth is, my point is this. It's not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have those things, but what I'm saying is we come in and we go out. We come in and we go out. It's like a swimming pool. We jump in. We feel good. We're cooled off. We get out. We dry. We're right back out in the heat sweating like we never were refreshed. We walk through the mud. We get somebody that cleans us off. Then we turn around like a dog walking right back through the same mud. Am I telling the truth? The Bible says a dog returns to his own vomit. And we'll do the same thing if we're not careful. You know what we call people who do that? Come on, be honest. You, you know it. I, I ain't going to say. 
But it's the truth. You ever, you ever help somebody? Get them out of something? Do everything you can? Help them? Change them? Clothe them? Feed them? Wash them? Do all this stuff? Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, it's so important. I, I really appreciate it. And they walk out the door with every opportunity to be different and they go back and do the same stuff. Do you? I, I feel really terrible for people like that. But I also feel pretty angry sometimes if I'm just being honest. And I, and I want to say, how stupid are you? And I get it. Sometimes it's, it's, it's trapped in, in, in the bondage and addiction. I, I get that. I'm not, I'm not trying to be callous. But sometimes people choose the same mess that God brought them out of. And then you want to point a finger and say somebody made you choose it. Nobody made you choose it. There ain't a single solitary being alive, including God, that'll make you choose something. That's a fact. And so what happens is, we come to church, we hear the word, we, we feel refreshed, the spirit moves, the spirit speaks, we feel the presence of God, we're in the anointing of God, and we leave going, Woo! Didn't we have church? And the whole time we're still planning to go to that same party tonight, go see that same man or that same girl or do that same crap that got us in the same place we needed to be in church for. If preaching and singing and worship doesn't cause you to change your intentions and your actions, the service had no impact on your life. It's the same with the Word of God. You can't just open up the Bible or turn on the app and listen to it and then get up for your day or get out of the car into the same attitude, the same mindset and actions that you've been doing, and it did you no good. Well, I listened to three chapters on the way to work today. Good for you. You'd have been better off listening to Ed Sheeran. At least you would have enjoyed it more. I'm just being honest. The word is there to bring us life, not make us act like we're alive. God didn't save you to make you a robot. God didn't save you so you could be an AI. You appear to be alive, but you're really just a machine. You're not really alive, you're dead. You're just animated. Are you following the connection I'm making here? They tell us that the biggest changes in the life of a believer happens in the first three years after they're saved. How many of you would look at and believe that? The first three years after somebody gets saved are the biggest visible and noticeable changes to their lives that happened in the first three years. But here's what I want to ask you. And I want to encourage you with this too. <clears throat> if you're there, keep it up. Keep it up. Go at it. Keep moving, keep growing, keep digging, keep searching, keep reaching. Don't you stop. Don't you ever quit. I don't care how many times you fall. Don't let anybody's finger be pointed at you. Don't let anybody judge you because you made a mistake. You keep getting up. You fall, you get up. You fall, you get up. I don't care how many times they say you failed. God's the only one that gets to declare when it's over. You keep going. But I want to ask those of us who have been around longer than three years, been in this body or been in this kingdom, when's the last time we were convicted to have a change in our life that somebody else could notice? Well, I'm mature. You're not quite as mature as you think you are or you wouldn't have said that. 
Because God's never done with you. He's always changing us. He's always moving us. And yes, I get it. I'm preaching to the choir most of the time. Most of the people in here that are listening to me or out there listening to me, you're right there with me. You're going, yes. And I'm just encouraging you with things that you need to continually be reminded of. But some of us sitting here today and some of us listening in today need to hear this because we are on the road headed to a bridge that's out and we driving like everything's okay. But you're going to go off the bridge, friend, and nobody's going to be there to help you when you do. When was the last time you came into church and heard the preaching or heard the singing or heard the testimony and you said... That's it. I'll never be the same again. And some of you right now can't stand it. You can't understand and listen to what I'm saying because it's 1159 and you're hoping I don't, I hope he don't go to 1215 today. Here's what I say, get up and leave. Ain't going to do you no good if you stay anyways. You ain't impressing nobody or fooling nobody. It's not the one that count anyways. You might fool me or somebody next to you or somebody else, but, well, Pastor, I can't believe you said that. Listen, it's the truth. That's what Jesus said. We don't like to hear this, but these are truths. Jesus said you need to be hot or you need to be cold because if you're lukewarm, I want to vomit you out of my mouth. I did not know this was going to go this way. But I'm okay with it. Listen to me. I want to ask you a very important question. And I want you to just consider this. Are you coming to church to get a charge? Or do you come to church to get a change? Because I'm grateful that the Spirit of God and the presence of God and worship charges us. I need that charge for the week. I need that charge for the day. I need that charge in my life. But I don't come here just to get charged up. I come here so that God can challenge me and change me and move me from where I am closer to where he wants me to be. And he charges me in the meantime. The Holy Ghost ain't your battery pack. He ain't here to give you goosebumps and make you feel something. He's here to make you alive and cause you to walk like you're living. <clears throat> you ready? How many of you watched any episodes of any of these at any point in your life? Or maybe you just seen an advertisement and you know what I'm talking about. Any of these zombie movies, zombie television shows. Anybody, you can raise your hand. It, 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 it. Well, I ain't raising my hand. They'll know I went to the picture show. It's really apparent when you watch these shows the difference between the people that are alive and the people that are dead. You know what I'm saying? And depending on the show... I've seen an episode or two of The Walking Dead. Before you all have a heart attack, it's okay. I'm still saved. Those zombies are slow. You know, you look at some of the World War Z zombies. You're toast. You might as well just lay down and give your heart to Jesus because your behind going to belong to them zombies. Because them things are fast. Y all, anybody remember that? <laughs> just moving like a thousand miles an hour. I'm like, you might as well just give up. What's the point, Pastor? Why are you talking about zombies? 
Because what I'm saying is, when you watch these things, there's a difference between the people who are alive and the people who are dead. There's a difference in the walk. There's a difference in the talk. There's a difference in the actions. There's a difference in how they live, how they present themselves, and how they breathe. There's a difference in those that are alive and those that are dead, and you can see it plainly. Now, I'm aware that in one of these shows that some of the live folks learned that you could live better if you looked like the dead folks. So they smeared blood on themselves and put dead skin over their face to trick the zombies and making them think they look like and smell like the dead folks. Well, here's spiritually what happens. Spiritually, we, we, we do the opposite. We put on the right clothes and we walk the right walk for a little bit because we want the live folks to act like we live. They want them to think, I want you to think I'm alive. I don't know why you play that game. Anyways, what benefit do you get from it? I mean, seriously. Those people who, and, and I've done this before, when I did it as a teenager, it's because I didn't want my daddy to whip my behind. But if you want to live how you want to live, why don't you just live how you want to live? Why you want to fake like you're a believer? You ain't getting nothing from it. You ain't impressing nobody. You ain't impressing God. You sure ain't impressing yourself. All you're doing is deceiving you and making you think you're okay and you ain't okay. Jesus said you need to be hot or cold. Am I all right here? I'm almost done, believe it or not. You coming for a charge? Or are you coming for a change? Are you in the word for a charge or are you in the word for a change? Listen, I love being Pentecostal. I love our worship services. I love the expression of God's presence and spirit. And I want to worship in that atmosphere. But I can receive anywhere if it's legit. I can sing any song if it worships God. I can hear anybody's style of preaching. It may not be my cup of tea. It may not be what I want to hear all the time. But I can listen to it if it's feeding my soul. And what are you doing, Pastor? I'm challenging you to understand the purpose of being a believer. It's so you can be alive. And stop walking like you're dead. We need change. We need change. We need it every day. We need it every week. We need it continued over and over and over again. We need to let the refiner refine us and purify us and empower us and draw us near. He needs to help us. We need change parents, change husbands, change wives, change children, change attitudes, change habits, change commitments. We need to change our mind, our hearts, our spirits. We need to allow the living God to change us in every single way that we need to be changed every day of our life. We need post-Easter intention. Here's what. Those disciples that came out of that tomb that day, having known those guys that came out of that room when Jesus walked in and said, hey, I'm alive, it's me. Those guys that jumped out of the boat and were fed by the Holy Ghost, or I mean by Jesus, cooking for them, <clears throat> Thomas, who touched his hands inside. They weren't perfect. And they still made mistakes. And they still needed correction and still needed discipline and still needed growth. But here's what you could tell. The intention of their heart had changed. They followed Jesus for three, three and a half years. And their intention was to hope that he is who we think he is. We want to learn from him. We want to be around him. And I think some of the time their intention was just, when I read it in there, I just, I just want to see if you really are who you say you are. 
Are you really who you say? But I want to tell you something. When they came out of that tomb, when they came out of those rooms, when they came out of those encounters, and they knew that he was alive, and they knew that what he had accomplished in them and what he had accomplished for the kingdom, the intention of their heart, the intention of their life, the step, the talk, the walk, the action, everything changed. In Acts chapter 3, there's a lame man sitting at the gate begging alms. Right? So I got a good point here. Just stay with me. He needed something in his life to lift him up. He needed something in his life to change. Right? He thought he needed money. But God gave him change. One preacher said it this way. This will be the best joke you hear today. He was begging for, mom, for alms, but God gave him legs. Isn't that true? What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying if you got something in your life, if you got something in your situation, if you got something in your marriage, if you got something in your job, if you got something in your body, if there's something in your mind, in your emotions, if you got something in it, you can either choose to marinate or elevate. You can wallow in it, or you can let God raise you out of it. In Genesis 21, Joseph had a dream. Listen to me. Joseph had a dream of fat cows and skinny cows. Anybody remember that dream? What happened in the dream? Skinny cows ate the fat cows. Right? But listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says they were still lean and unhealthy. See, this is what I see that happens to a lot of people when they come to church or they get in the Word and they hear five-star, they hear preaching, they, they eat a five-star meal, a spiritual buffet, and then they walk out anorexic and emaciated. It's almost like they took their finger and stuck it down their spiritual throat and just throwed up every nutrient that they just ate because their life does not walk and talk and present itself like it just ate a huge, wonderful meal. And here's what we got to decide. You, you need to decide this. Am I talking about you? I can't decide that. God knows already, and he's telling you. Only you can decide if I'm talking about you. Only you can do something about it. Only you can ask God to help you change it. Or you can marinate in it, or you can let him elevate you above it. I'd like the prayer team to come. It's 12, 11, and we're still going to pray. Just come on. Listen, God doesn't want you coming to church. God doesn't want you reading the Bible. God doesn't want you going to, 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 to revivals. God doesn't want you doing all the things, praying and fasting and doing all these things so you can just leave like you came, so you can just do what it is you always done because you're just going to get what you always got. He doesn't want you to keep getting what you've always got. He wants you to be different. He wants you to be joyous. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be empowered. He died and rose again so that your post-Easter Easter intentions would be that you'll never be the same again. Listen, you may be as close to God as you've ever been at this point in your life right now. Right now, you could be sitting here saying, this is the closest to God I've ever been. I promise you, God wants you one step closer. He's got better things, greater things more in store for you. Just when you think God couldn't bless me more, I promise you, you ain't even seen. The Bible says, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, or has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for those that love him. You got no idea what God has around the corner, the next step. But you got to be willing to take the next step. Listen to me, on the day of Pentecost, it was shown 
It's, it, it, what showed up was two of the strongest elements that we have, wind and fire, right? Wind and fire. Wind rearranges things. Fire redefines things. You cannot rearrange and redefine yourself. I don't think I have. Yvonne, come play something for me. You cannot rearrange and redefine yourself. It takes the Holy Spirit to do this. Are you hearing me, child of God? It takes the Holy Spirit to do this. And it only happens when you surrender and submit and allow God to make the change in your life that needs to be made. We're not going to go back to the same things. Now, I don't care where you are today. This message is for you. If you are an unbeliever sitting here today, listen, I, I get it. All, I, I'm going to just tell you this. Today wasn't a, a seeker-sensitive message. I get that. I'm in your face. I'm in your grill. I'm all up in your business, and that's fine because we need these things. Stick around. Sometimes they're happy. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they... Sometimes they, they, we, we, we laugh, sometimes we cry. Sometimes we feel like we, we walk out of here feeling like we've been in a battle for 12, for 12 rounds. Sometimes we feel like we're on the mountaintop, but we always have been touched and blessed by the Spirit of God. And I don't care where you are today, if you need Jesus as your Savior, if you've never been saved before, today's your day. If you're away from God and you've walked away and you're not where you need to be with Him, today's your day to come home. If you're in God and you've been and you've been resisting his call, today is your day to give in. If you're if you're in the call and you've been saying, I'm walking with God and I'm doing good, today's the day that God's saying, I got something else for you, son. I got a little something else for you, daughter. Whatever the case is, whatever God's saying to you, today's the day to respond to it. We change. That's what the point is. The whole point. Post Easter intentions is I will not be the same today that I was yesterday and I'm not going to be the same tomorrow that I am today. My job is to keep moving forward in the ghost in, in the Holy Ghost of God. Listen to this and now I'm going to pray. In Ezekiel chapter 46 verse 9 I want you to bring that scripture up will you? It says, but when the people of the land shall come before the Lord in the solemn feast, he that enter in by the way of the, give, me, give it to me, north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. And he that enter in by the south gate shall go out by the north gate. And then it says, if you come in by the east gate, you go out by the west gate. And if you come in by the west gate, you go out by the east gate. This was God's law of worship when we came to the house of God. This is what the point is. God's law of worship for his people is that it is forbidden for you to leave the same way you came. Are you following me? You don't come in and leave just like you came. Now you may not be, I didn't preach about you that day and you're not all sobbing and teared out and I got to be in the altar. But you've been changed by the Spirit of God. You've been changed by, the, you availed yourself to the Holy Ghost to allow Him to do something in you. Because the moment you think you arrive, the Bible says you better watch out because you got a fall coming. Be ready and let God use you. So I want to ask you something. How many of you came in by the south gate and your intention was to walk out straight out of the south gate? But God says, nope, you're not going that way. Today's the day you're different. Today's the day you're different. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. And listen. <clears throat> I do not want to hear. Now, you, you're allowed to have it. You're allowed to do it. I'm not going to force you to do anything. Nobody is. 
But nobody wants to hear it, not even God. When you say things like, well, that's just the way I am. Or I just have a hard time with that. Or I just, I can't do things like some other people can. Bull hockey. Can I just say that? Is that okay, pastor? If it ain't, I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel it. It's just hogwash. It's an excuse because you're not willing to do what it needs to change. You're not willing to let God do what he needs to do in you. I don't know why you ain't already running to this altar to have somebody pray with you and meet you where you are so God can do a work in you. Because I don't have to be a prophet to know you walked in the door today with problems. I don't have to be a prophet to know you walked in the door today with issues. With stuff that you need changed in your life. And only God can change it. And since you're not getting a hint, I want to tell you the altar's open. You can come pray. And I'm not being mean and I'm not being ugly and I'm not being mad. But I'm tired of the devil taking our stuff. I'm tired of the devil taking our kids. I'm tired of the devil taking our joy. I'm tired of the devil taking our health. I'm tired of the devil taking our bodies. I'm tired of the devil taking our peace of mind. But I can preach all I want to preach. And I can pray all I want to pray. And we can sing how great is our God and, 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 and until our voices literally quit working. But if people aren't willing to allow God to do the work, we're just going to keep on going out the same gate we came in. But that's not God's intention for you. So I want to ask you, when is enough enough? Are you going to marinate in it? Are you going to be elevated above it? If you're here today and you need Jesus, somebody will meet you right here in the altar. Please come. Please come. He's the only one that can help you. He died for you. He loved you. He rose from the grave for you. If you need anything in your life, I want you to come. Somebody will meet you right here in this altar and pray with you. Jeff, come right here, would you? <clears throat> come on. Come on. Somebody said earlier today, and I won't call names, but I want to say that it's refreshing when people are just being honest in the house of God. Amen. We were praying earlier, and one of our people said, Pastor, can I just share a word? And this person said, I feel like I'm just going through the motions. I, 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 I've been in my work week, and I've been in my life, and i got all this stuff on me, but, and I'm here at church, but I feel like I'm just playing and just going through the motions, and I don't want to do that anymore. And we were just able to pray right then and right there. Listen, child of God. How long are you going to just go through the motions? How long are you just going to allow the devil to keep stealing what he's been stealing and beating you in the same way he's been beating you when God is saying, I got a way for you. I got a hope for you. I got an answer for you. How long? How long? How long? If you want to pray and just pray by yourself, you can come find a place to pray. Or you can pray right where you are. If you're at home listening, you can pray right there. If you're driving down the road listening, you can pray. Pull over the side of the road if you need to. If you'll click that link or, or whatever, you, you, the, the, we'll pray with you in agreement. The Lord will help you because He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Yes, He does. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Listen, we're done. If, 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 you, if you would love to stay here and pray, reach a hand this way and pray and agree with somebody. If you need to be dismissed, then you are dismissed in the name of the Lord. We bless you. We bless you in the name of the Lord.